We're back. <laughs> One o'clock rock. One here on Think Tech. All right. And community matters because we're talking about the community today and it matters, okay? And the big thing about the community is the workforce. And we have two special guests about the workforce. One is a national name, Carlene McKay. Uh, and she has written, she has organized people, she, ha she has spent time with Apple and Steve Jobs. I want to talk more about that. Sure. Okay, and Rob Kinslow, who is kind of local in the sense that I know you a long time, right? Yeah, I've been here 17 years now. Aerospace engineer. Yeah, sustainable Done a lot of things, been around the entrepreneurial you yeah. know, world, community for a long time. And you guys are together. You have something going on. We're working <laughs> About workforce. Yeah. The new workforce in Hawaii. Tell me what that is. Well, uh, the world has changed. The workplace has changed. People are living longer. Uh, all the new things, and especially big data and a few things like that, have changed how we're going to work, when we're going to work, where we're going to work, and even if we're going to work. And that's always <laughs> been the driver for me. Yeah, that's really important. It's important in the country. It's important now. It's important in, the, in the, all the trouble in this administration. <laughs> and, and it's important in Hawaii. It's important to all of us for any number of reasons, and we can explore some of those if you wish at some point. But I think the fun of it for me has been coming here is there's good access to people who are interested in the changes. Yeah, okay. And why Rob? What is it about Rob? I feel so Kinslow. You feel Kinslow? Yeah. <laughs> I feel Kinslow. Thank you. <laughs> I feel Kinslow as well. Uh, I met him at Hogan. Hogan Entrepreneur Program at I Chaminade. I did, yeah. yes, at Chaminade. John Webster, as I recall. John Webster and Rob Kay and, and a few Rob other Kay. people okay. you know. Yeah. And it, I think we just shared an intrigue for what was coming. So when some of the speakers would come in and talk about real entrepreneurial adventures, not just the next job, it, it was exciting. It still is exciting. Yeah, it's a, it's a magnet of sorts. It's yes. an exchange, a gathering on, on that subject. Exactly. Yeah. And why did you like Colleen? <laughs> what was it about her that attracted you, Rob? Well, you know, being a self-employed kind of consultant, kind of man of all, jack of all trades, I, when I first heard her speak at Hogan, I was like, she's talking about the future of work. I need to know about that. <laughs> and, you know, she has such an engaging, lively style that I was like, I need to know her. And so I, uh, you know, pinged her a few days later and said, hey, I'd like to talk to you. And she said, well, why do you want to talk to me? I'm not very interesting. And I said, yes, you are. <laughs> and I said, I really, and so we had lunch and uh, the rest is in a little bit uh, short history of um, the work first Hawaii. We started working together, developing blog posts and getting a website and uh, doing all the things that you need to do to get a kind of startup uh, uh, off the ground. The website, before we forget, what is the name of the website? NewWorkforceHawaii.com. Okay. So, um, you know, so what do you guys do together, I want to explore this in some detail, uh, in New Workforce Hawaii? Well, we're in our first year of development, so we're mostly doing marketing and outreach and telling other people who we are, why we're here, and where we want to go. And so those three questions are, uh, in our blogs on the Hawaii Reporter, mm -hmm. as, as you are, and uh, on our website. And uh, basically, I think the main, trend, the main trend that we're we're kind of riding is that by 2020 or 2025, fully 35, 40, maybe even 45 percent of the workforce will be employed part-time or full-time or some of the time or for fee or on their own because yeah. employers are cutting back on full-time employees. The gig economy. The gig economy. Yeah. So uh, uh, are you a nonprofit or are you a profit corporation? You said marketing. <laughs> what are you marketing? We are absolutely not for profit at this totally point. Not, yeah. <laughs> we know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, that's why we decided we were a membership, exclusive membership as we got going so that we could meet people who could really add value to it and then we can decide what we want to do with it. But in the meantime, if I can make some money, I do. If he can make some money, he does. And we just let it flow as it's, it's intended to. And when you say make money, you mean consulting or speaking, that kind? Yeah. Yeah, those things. All right. So far, they're not paying us a fortune, though, <laughs> well, as you might imagine. After show, all of that is going to change. That's probably. what I was I, told. The, the, the calls, the letters, the, the social media are going to roll all over you. 
I hope you call me and thank me for it, yeah? I promise you I will. We'll be on many well, stages. We'd like to see you on the show many times. <laughs> <laughs> me too. So um, let's talk about, you know, the workforce as it is. Uh -huh. I mean, we've identified, I mean, look, Hawaii came off the plantations, um, and a lot of people came off the plantations without jobs. That's right. And then we've been affected by the, uh, you know, the prospect of an innovation economy, and then an innovation economy that didn't really happen and still isn't really happening. And then you have a lot of, I mean, I'm just identifying some of the problems. A lot of right. millennials here, uh, the ones who didn't go to the mainland, uh, you there know. There you go. And, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and, you know, who are looking for work from their parents' homes. Yeah. Uh, and trying to make all sense out of how, you know, Hawaii offers so much and yet it doesn't have the, quote, jobs. And then trying to make their own jobs, you know, par part of being sensitive to what you're talking about. So where are we now, nationally? and Hawaii in terms of the changes, the sea changes around careers and jobs that we must address as a society? Well, thank you. That's really an important question. And of course, we have public sector and private sector and different issues for both. Public sector, one of the problems is we're $14 billion in the hole in underfunded pensions. So what's <laughs> going to happen there? Uh, they're going to hire fewer people full time and more support help as they need it. They're going to have to adjust their pensions at some point, just as Social Security has. This means changing government, because we can't afford to do government the way we used to. We used no, to. we can't. Yeah. No, we can't. And a lot of the uproar that you see today, forgetting who's the political person of the day, is because of all these changes that have people completely unnerved as to where to go and what to do. In the private sector, I think there's more opportunities in Hawaii than at any time in their history. And I think it depends in large part, and I want Rob to, to pop in here, when you look at um, Alexander and Baldwin uh, leaving, and you look at the demise of pineapple, the story behind it is so interesting, because the pineapple first went to the Philippines, because we had imported all the workers, and then it went to Costa Rica. Where is it going next? And what will not coming to Hawaii. It's I'll not tell coming you that. here. It is not coming here. But what are we going to have? We are the gateway to the Pacific. And the beauty of that is, and Jay, this is true for me at the age of almost almost eighty, Holy working Lord. full time. Nobody ever meets me. Take a look at my LinkedIn and look at the picture. You'll say, Who is that? <laughs> and that was me. But the fact is you don't have to work here to earn here. So I write for people on the mainland. I write for people who need books, such as the one I showed you. People are going to be able to do that. This is called Playbook for Teens. Yeah. And it's a sort of how to do it book for it, teens to engage in. No, in, it's not how. What is it? It's inspiration. Inspiration and for them here's to how engage I learned in it. the workforce. Yeah, but I got to tell you about that because I'm so excited about it. I saw Silver Linings, the playbook, a couple of years ago. Have you seen that movie? And it took me from 10 years of standing on stages and trying to tell people how to do it. And I said, wait a minute, let's just inspire. So I, in this particular book, as with five others, I found people who told their stories as to how they did it. People like you, who had been uh, very prominent in one field and then said, hey, but you know, life's longer, new I want to do more. New chapter, new changes. That's yeah. it. So what is the message of this inspiration? The message is, that there are ways to do each of these. And the women who told their stories in this book tell how. But the real thing is to get the kids looking at the future with open eyes and eagerness. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> it's, not, it's not easy if you have two things going on. One is you, you still believe in the old model, which, which actually has paid the bills for Americans for a long time and people in Hawaii. It's that workaday thing, you know, you start a job, you continue the job, there's only one chapter in your life really, and then you rely on your retirement and all that. Um, and the fact that that's one thing, that you're relying on that, you're locked into that kind of thinking. And the second is, well, it doesn't work anymore. You know, the gig economy is not because we love the gig economy, it's because it's the alternative that works for us now, and it is different from what was going on Absolutely. before. And, and uh, so, you know, if you want a new car or a house, you better think those thoughts, you better figure it out. And you can look at it as opportunity or threat. It really can. Yeah. When I look at what we can do and what we must do, I can see it both ways. Let me give you an example, if I may, please. 
babies born by 2025 will have average life expectancies between 90 and 100 years. That's a given. Let's see, average retirement's what, 55 here? Everybody's going to outlive their money. So we need to start by looking at how do we earn in other ways than that old job. And let me ask you a harsh question. Do you think that if I showed up here at the age of almost 80 and said, I want a job full time with you, that you'd ever even think about hiring me at my age? I'm so happy you asked that question. Absolutely, yes. Well, sure you would, because... Well, I'll talk to you afterward. You know, but I know why. <laughs> I know why. But generally speaking, you've got age biases, you've got gender issues, you've got loss. The big loss is that we don't have the current skills. Right. And that's and that my comment to you when you guys came in, and I'm going to dwell on that a little bit. Maybe we have to take a break first, but... Let's not uh, take any breaks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is, um, you know, we... It's not... A question of whether there are jobs we have an unqualified workforce our workforce that's is it. not keeping up that's right and, you know when you, you want to go higher you have to look far away to, to find people who are qualified and what does this that mean backward and what does that mean it means that our educational institutions are not teaching kids marketable skills they're teaching them the same old same old that you get a BA mm -hmm. in anything sociology <laughs> and you get out and you don't have a degree you get a BS in math and you get out and there's might be a job for you but it's not guaranteed that you're going to just because you have a degree that you're going to get a job anymore but you have to engage in the marketplace that's you know, it you have to you have to and we talk about this in the context of entrepreneurship right yeah. Uh, you have to find out what the market really wants. You have right. to examine it. You have to ask people. You have to have lots of conversations yes. or social media. And that point and should start earlier than when you get out of school. Absolutely. High school with the kids. We're Absolutely. Starting. And yeah. this all takes us to a question of timing. What's, yeah. the, most, what's, the, most, what's the most important thing? <laughs> timing. Okay. Yeah. That's why we're going to take a break. Yeah. Thank you. Aloha and Happy New Year. It's 2017. Please keep up with me on Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to talk about a clean and just energy future. Please join me on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock. Mahalo. Aloha. My name is Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider. More than a third of Hawaii's population live in some form of association. And our show is all about educating board members and owners about the responsibilities and obligations and providing solutions for a great association. You can watch me live on Thursdays, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. each week. Aloha. Start there. Shrei Dao Chu Chung. What the heck does that mean? That means the water will find its way. Okay. Okay, it's an old Mandarin proverb oh. kind of thing. And it has lo lots of secondary meaning. Shrei but if dance. I'm a, a millennial, uh, if I'm a young woman or a young man, and I am faced with these issues about whether I am qualified or how can I be qualified, uh, how can I earn a living, buy a car, buy a house, you know, make it in this new world, this world that is sea changed around us and we didn't see it, we didn't realize it. <clears throat> the water will find a way mm -hmm. and this person, mm -hmm. all of us really, mm -hmm. have to find a way yeah. in a new dynamic mm -hmm. market that has changed and will continue to change. Mm -hmm. So I need from you guys, you know, in your role as mentors and your role as examining the workforce and trying to encourage people to do well in the workforce as it exists today. I need some points of advice from you. Ready, go. Ready, go. Well, I'll start with the youngest among us. I'm on the board of Star of the Sea, and we talk about early learning, and these kids are building robots by the second and third grade. These kids are looking at exploring in ways that nobody else is doing except for certain specific schools. So what happened care. there? The school, leadership in the, the school. school. It wasn't government, it was the school. It was the school, is and the that's school. That's a, a religious organization, so they're free of the Department of Education yes. mostly, and they can do this kind of thing. And the kids are getting the kind of education early. And the parents. The parents have a role in these choices, don't right. you think? And the parents have to be Akamai about it. They can't say, oh, the school will take care of it. Mm. And along those lines, I speak to the parents of the, of the school, not just the teachers and the students, but we're gathering on the 16th, I think, of uh, this month, all the parents 
to come talk about where it's the market headed. What are we thinking about with our children this early? We're talking about what do you say when somebody raises the question is of where raising a generation, another generation that's just going to leave town, the diaspora, the Hawaiian diaspora. Uh, you know, what good does it do us to do that? How, what do you say to them, actually? Well, I think it's the answer that you've discovered and one of the reasons I wanted to meet you. Technology is everywhere. It's not one place or the other. It is here now and we can use that in any any type of work that we want she to have. She seems very passionate about this. Oh, I am. So Rob, how much of what Carlene is saying do you agree with? Well, I am largely discovering everything she says to be true, if, most, most uh, dramatically in my own life. Uh, where I am a mid-careerist who, uh, you know, was an aerospace engineer and then traveled around the world and then came to Hawaii and set up a small business and then had a big financial failure and lost everything and starting again. New chapter, as you said earlier. And dabbling about in the Dungeons and Dragons of Honolulu Society <laughs> and trying to figure out where I fit in and networking yeah. and yeah. Uh, doing market analysis. Trade out, true trying. Yeah, exactly, trying to find where does the water flow. Yeah. And, uh, and when I discovered Carlene, I discovered someone who had the credibility and the history and the knowledge that I was missing in my networking. No one here wanted to pay attention to a mid-career guy who seemed to know more than they did or thought he didn't know as much as they did or was out of his what league trying to find out do I fit in over there, do I fit in over there, and they didn't want to see that. But, so what I wanted to do was find someone where uh, they had something I didn't. And so Carlene had this knowledge and she has this disposition of just passion and enthusiasm for this and that is what buoyed me up and uh, got me to get on this path of discovering what does the market need at my age? What, is the, what are the trends that mid-careerists and now I'm looking into younger people, you know, college students, what are they looking forward to? At Hogan, I'm mentoring uh, college students mostly. Most of them are just looking for a job even though they're in an entrepreneurial program because they want um, to be an entrepreneur, because the entrepreneur is sexy today, because uh, well, innovation- Well, sometimes all you got. Yeah, and innovation, <laughs> we're we are trying to create startup paradise. You know, we are trying to uh, create an innovation economy here in Hawaii. It's the strongest effort I've ever seen Hawaii try to create. Let me hold you on that. Strong effort, passion, how successful to date? How successful to date? I think it's boggling how much interest that we have. How can we convert interest into action? Yeah. That's always the big test, as you well know. But if you look at just the response to it, I think I have 10 speeches between now and the end of April because people are saying, I want to hear more. Tell me specifically. So one might be executive women, uh, which is tonight, by the way. And we'll be speaking to most women who are 40, 50 years old who've been a long time in their jobs and they haven't a clue about what networking really means. Huh. Networking always in Hawaii, in Puerto Rico, where I'm from, by the way. Soy Puerto Riqueña. Oh, really? Yes. Speak see. Spanish right now today. Claro que sí. How do you say Shrey Dao Chu I have no Spanish. idea what that means Never in any mind. language <laughs> except water or something. Um, but if, if you look at the women tonight, they probably have been in their positions for 15, 20, 25 years. If they had to leave tomorrow, they're going to send a resume somewhere and somebody's going to look at it and say, oh, this is interesting, but she's been there a long time. She probably makes too much money. <laughs> a resume to me is a chronological obituary. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it is, especially as you mature. What can you do for me now, today? Well, isn't yes. that the question? That is the question. And that's not often on a resume. Okay, so what do you do if you're one of these executives you're talking about? Or what do you do if you're a millennial in a market that is, that is not adjusted? It has not adjusted. This country, this state, 
Am I right? It hasn't adjusted. We have to make it but adjust. But it's starting to. And, what do we do? And I think you have to be seductive. You have to make people... Seduction. Seduction. This is the answer. <laughs> we learned it here on Think Tech. Yeah, at any age <laughs> for different reasons. Um, I think the seduction is you have to make people want to know you, not you want to know them. And so I like digital technology a lot. And I had mentioned to you another time about LinkedIn. I think it's the, the replacement for the resume. Explain why. How does it work? Because How does it it's do an that? ad versus a chronology. It's I want you to know this about me. And so if you say, well, I, you know, I know that person over there. Uh, do you think they might be interested in coming to work for me? Why don't you find out first of all if they're doing what you want done? And if you highlight that correctly on your LinkedIn, now it becomes very evident. Jay, I can't imagine anything better than somebody calling me versus my having to say, please, please talk to me and help me. And the fact is that I have more clients than you'll ever dream of. So you never define seen yourself, you put yourself out there in public, Yep. and you find, well, you, there is a society of like-minded individuals who are in that marketplace. Yes. But this is, correct me if I'm wrong now, this is very exciting, it's very powerful, it uses technology, it's the wave of the future. But how good is it right now? How many people, how many employers, how many people actually succeed using social media in the marketplace for work? Well, I will tell you. In Hawaii or? Or in general. You can answer that any way you want. Okay, I'm going to answer in general and say that uh, on the mainland, when I worked with the Intels, the Apples, all of these firms, you might send them the resume, but before they even look at it, if it's gotten through the software, I might add, they look at your LinkedIn. And due diligence. Pardon? It's due diligence. Due diligence. It's, it's, it's investigating with the tools that are so available. So there's my resume in front of you, Jay, and yeah. you just go, well, it made it through the cut on the software, which is rough cuts today, by the way. <laughs> uh, and then you look at LinkedIn and say, well, she's not talking about any of this on her LinkedIn. So maybe I'll just put this one over here. Yeah. Yeah. I think digital technology for networking is the answer. May I give you another example? When I look at organizations such as the one that I'm speaking at tonight, why don't they have quick bios of their members they don't? on their website? I hope you tell them to do that. I will. Okay, I knew and you would. You're listening right now, I hope. Uh, just mini bios, a way so you know which ones you want to start a conversation with. And today, just this morning at 5.30, I might add, I had uh, an, uh, an, no, a, text or an email, I can't remember, I think it was a text, but I could be wrong, don't call me a liar, um, from someone who's going tonight who said, I'm really looking forward to meeting you and hearing what you have to say. Now, the whole speech is 20 minutes. I don't know how much you're going to get from that, but... Well, it's, uh, it's, but that's the span of attention now. That's the world we live in. Well, I'm fast. You have, you have, you, yeah, you have to be. You have to be fast. <clears throat> you have the 20 minutes to make the pitch. Gosh. It's just like in the world of entrepreneurship. Yeah. But you know what? I, what I'm getting here is that you need to know social media yes. in order to live in that new marketplace. Yes. But you also have to have skills. It's not just, you know, promoting yourself. Exactly you, right. You have to have a, a, a package. You have to have the content. You have the goods. You have to have the goods. So how much of the goods? And, of course, if you're in social media, that is a statement That's already a statement. that you That's know right. about social media. But query, and you're into this a lot, Rob, I mean, how much technology, how much should I focus on, um, you know, at this, at this meeting tonight? What should Carlene tell them about technology? Should they focus on that? Is it the be-all, end-all? How important is it? Well, my particular you know, background uh, was in high tech and in uh, engineering uh, st uh, stealth aircraft. But um, you have to be savvy, but you don't have to be immersed completely in technology because you need people skills. And networking and mentorship are two people skills that young people could m must learn. Uh, for networking, by that I mean how do you reach out? Who do you find? Who, who's in your field? And mentoring. Who's your mentor? How do you find a mentor? Well, how do you treat that mentor? How do you invite a person to be your mentor? How do you how do you seek out these people who become then major goalposts in your life? So I am not so much of a technologist anymore as I am more focused on the face-to-face, eyeball-to-eyeball, 
you know, speaking to people about who I am and, and what I'm interested in and how we can work together and collaborate. Right, and once you find that, once you find your place in the milieu, right. then you can develop yes. um, you know, the skills you need. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a yin and a yang, yeah. all this Chinese. Uh, you, you, you have certain skills to start with, then you check the marketplace yeah. and you see what else you need and then you get that. But I blog, so I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, you know, I mean, i uh, not on Google Plus yet, uh, but you know, there is uh, a point of diminishing returns. Yes. Where you can't be involved in too many things or you're spending too much of your time in the ether world, in the digital world, and you're not enough time in the real world. And many people still, the business, mostly, these still these days, especially in Hawaii, belongs in the real world a lot of it. You know, you have to communicate using digital technologies and you might have to have a skill in coding, for example, if you're going into automation or if you're going to, uh, you know, um, you know, I think that, I go think into robotics. I think it's a very important point. So you need there to have those. There comes a time when you, you know, that the social media and the networking and all that, all these the social skills, um, you know, uh, it can only help you so far. You need to be a whole-brained actor. In other words, you need to be able Perfect. to use your left brain for technology and science, and you'd be able to use your right brain for communication and empathy and relating to other you people. you got to use both. you got to have skills in both. So we're about out of time. I'm sorry to tell you this. I am too. I don't be sad. Uh, instead, instead of being sad, why don't you address camera one camera and talk one. to the people and tell them what they should understand that they don't perhaps understand right now in order to mix, you know, and mingle and engage in this new working world. So, uh, I can do this in how many minutes now? <laughs> no, it just takes six hours, whatever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm talking 30 seconds here, Carl. Okay, 30 seconds. The, the key to marketing today is to know what you're looking for, what the market needs, and how you fit in that. And you use the tools that go along with that fit. Not every tool that's ever made and known to us today, but which ones do you need? And the bottom line for me is you need a bio or a resume, not both. The bottom line is you need a LinkedIn. You may need a Facebook or you may not. And so you have to make decisions based on what the market needs. I'll tell you one last thing and then I'll get off. The really critical thing is if I am selling hospitality, for example, our big business here in Hawaii, I want a Facebook because that's a visual impression. If I'm selling my writing skills, I don't need Facebook. So you have to adapt your use you of these adapt. tools to what you want and, and who you are. And what and who you who your audience your is. is. Carleen, Rob, you guys are great. Thank you for coming down and I do feel so kinslow to both of you. Oh well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's we a appreciate pleasure. you.